she she applied for old pension house, and she got it almost right away. But other people have to wait for five years. For example, yeah, she got only five months. And then when she got it, it's a very bad place, you know, dangerous place, kind of, you know, dangerous area. And she had to walk three staircases, third floor. But she said because she prayed to Master to have it, so she have it quick. So she think this, uh, whatever Master give is fine, she's not afraid. But one day, uh, very late, uh, three, four o'clock huh, in the morning, huh, some, yeah, somebody knock, knock at the door. But she just uh, pray and she not afraid. And after a while, they try to open the door, but they cannot open. And then after a while, they left. And then in the morning, she went and talked to the the building manager. Yeah, about that, just complaining. She just say that she's afraid and all that, but not didn't think anything else. And when she went to Cancun and come back, he told her that okay, I will look for a better place for you. I will tell you know the boss to give you a better place another building. And she was thinking he just saying that, but even then it would take a couple of years. But when she came back from Cancun, <laughs> he told her to fill in the application immediately, <laughs> and then she got another place with the um, elevator, sunshine in the room, <laughs> clean and everything, <laughs> and safe. So I said to her that, um, it is like that. Even though sometimes we have a place that we do not feel like up to our liking, but if we somehow believe that it is for us, because uh, heaven wants to give it to us, or we trust in God or trust in heaven or trust in Master Power and just accept it anyway, then later, even if it's bad, it will turn into good, or we will somehow use it as a step to go to a better place because it's, uh, we passed the test, or maybe because we are so, so spiritual that heaven are touched. Understand? And the same with me also, the same with me. And yeah, wherever is given to me, whatever, and it is uh, for spiritual reason, I would stay. And even other place, better, you know, more uh, favorable and more beautiful, or more convenience or whatever, but if it's not spiritually strong, not spiritual at all, or not strong enough compared to the other place which is not too good, I would never move to the better place. Since, you know, since uh, I begin practicing, it's always like that. And I always get better and better place all the time. <laughs> Even I had to move a lot, but it's always better. And whenever I go to a place and I see there's no spiritual, not much spiritual or no spiritual, of course, heaven's everywhere, of course, but there are some place with more heaven gates and you see, you know, spiritual blessing and portals. If I see not there, then I feel no attraction at all. But if I know a place is spiritual, no matter what, even if don't have anything there, even no house, even I would bring a tent there and <laughs> and stay all by myself, you know, even no facilities, nothing. Yes, you understand? Even alone and it's not so safe and whatever. Everything in my life, I don't talk about younger time, but since I know spiritual practice, everything in my life is just for that category, for spiritual practice only, for improvement in spiritual practice for myself and for everyone as well. Okay. But some of my attendants before, you know, they don't think that way. Because they like this room better or that room better, and then if that, I told them to move for their own sake, you know, sometimes feng shui, sometimes better spiritually, or sometimes better for peace between us, they just don't feel like moving. Or move just a little, put something there, but st just to go, come and go, but still, you know, attached to the other room, which, in her opinion, or his opinion, is better. You see, they call me master, but they don't always listen. Hmm. Women also, not just men, eh? The ego is a terrible thing. Even I say personally, for example, one of the attendants still doesn't move. How would you think that if intuitively she's not even sure where, <laughs> what to do? Understand me? Yeah. And I feel so sorry for this kind of people, because once you miss that step, 
the next step you miss also. You understand? Even if it's worse for you, you feel like that place is not privacy, less privacy for you, or less pretty, or whatever in your opinion, just move. The next time you will have better place, because you will, just like a step, you know, go up, 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 up. Mm. So, so you did the right thing. <laughs> Even the first house is dangerous, you know it, and you have to walk three floors, but you still accepted it, because you believe that the Master gave it to you. You see, and later you get a better one. It's just a step, because if you have not been into that building, then you will not have the chance to take this beautiful one afterward. You see? Mm. Sometimes you go to some place, but this is just to begin something else, or you met somebody just for somebody else. So you just have to be patient, accept, and be grateful for anything. I try to give the chance so that you can erase the last, you know, burden. You know, whatever I give you, you have to keep it. You understand? Like if I give you to the fourth level, well, you have to keep it by being humble, or diligent more, and then you go up more. But if you don't, then you go down again. You understand? And your your karma before coming after you. If you're lower, they get you. If you're higher, they can't. When I was in Hungary, he was very helpful, you know, and very happy, of course, because, oh, Master come first time and everybody comes, so he's happy, very willing to do things. And he was very good then, so his level go up. And then here it's different, he go down again. When I'm not there, he go down. He go down before he came here. But of course I cannot throw him out, eh? So the scolding and all that, just cleaning. Eh? So don't you ever try to side with him again, because you'll be in trouble, yeah? You don't even know it. I'm warning you, okay? Don't interfere with my work. But you don't know who's who, no? I can even take a devil and bring it up to the fifth level. That's for me easy. But for that devil to keep the fifth level is not. You understand me? I can give you anything you want. It's just that you can't keep it. You see so many like millionaire uh, children, after the father died, he squandered a lot of all this money and then become beggar even. Worse than all of them before, have debt, go to jail, or this is the same thing with heaven work, yeah? Just don't keep asking me, why couldn't we go higher, higher? Well, I could, but you don't keep, because your personality don't fit your brain, your karma, you just keep going back to the level before, habit, the habit of the karma pulling. And if you slip, and then you go down, no? Uh, very difficult, no? To keep a saint who take many years of training, unless you came from there, yeah? And even then you go down, you have different DNA and you entangle with many other karma, then they also pull in you. It's not that easy. It's not that I don't want to give you anything. I do give everybody, just they can't give it. Some give it only one night, <laughs> like a one-night king, you know? Hanyuan 不过没关系啊Many people are scared. <laughs> Many high high level people are scared of this world. They are aware, they they are aware, very much aware the danger of this world. Very difficult to keep yourself pure and clean. Very difficult to keep your position if you mix with the people of this world. You might even 
be dragged down into that level and stay here forever. Understand? Forever. Be just an ordinary being. Because once you get in there, in this world, it is different than when you are up, up in the, the heaven. Power is different. The freedom of movement is different. Anything can go wrong, understand? So they might even fall. For example, you are a very good, strong person. You can run very fast on the surface of the earth. But once you become a diver, yeah, you put on all this equipment, the, uh, uh, I'll say, oxygen mask, yeah, and the, uh, the diver suit, and you dive deep into the sea. Now, you are under the water, and in the deep, the seabed, you might encounter a problem, you understand? You are under, you, you are within the fish, you look like the fish, <laughs> and you swim like the fish, and every other fish look like you, they think you are a fish. Yeah, they might come and attack you, want to swallow you up, because you are a small fish. Uh, compared to other fish, you are small, <laughs> like the sharks <laughs> or the killer whales, yeah? Is that right, killer whales? Yeah? And you, you look small, they might want to swallow you, including your oxygen mask and oxygen bottle and everything. Yeah, you might not be able to digest it, but it does not know. You think you are just a, a, a strange fish. You might want to try what kind of fish <laughs> for dinner, yes. <clears throat> now you are far away from the uh, central control, yeah, control central, uh, how to say, center, yeah. And then you might get the message through, but you might not, if the fish attack you and cut off the connection. <laughs> So even though you were very strong on the surface of the earth, you were helpless under the water because you were truly not fish. And if you cut off the oxygen mass or its damage, you're done, finished. You'll probably stay there forever. You might turn into a fish, inside a fish, <laughs> and become a fish. The outside shape is a fish, inside different. <clears throat> Understand or not? Yeah. Mm. Therefore, even a master who came into this world has to protect himself. Understand? Many different ways. Many different ways. Not ordinary way. Always have to keep contact within. Understand? with the kingdom of God, with the central intelligence. <laughs> Otherwise, he'll be in trouble. You see how Sekamoni Buddha has been an ignorant person for twenty-some years, or thirty years, before he is awakened again. And due, due to some good chance that he made a good master, that he's awakened himself, otherwise he might just not. Can you imagine if he produced a few more babies and then uh, his father died, and then he became a king, and he might be even worse off. He might not even awaken himself. You understand? Or Jesus Christ, he's supposed to be the Son of God, the one and only even. And what did he do? What did, what did he do in the youth? Nothing much. The same like everybody. Even being a carpenter, <laughs> earning money in such a, a laborious way, you know? Nothing special. And if he has not been awakened due to enlightenment, due to some good master, due to the grace of God, then where has he gone to? We don't know. So you see, Judas and Peter, they're supposed to be great enlightened saints, following the great master, and they fail even. Even though temporarily, understand? But what I mean is the danger of this world. 
At least they know they failed and they turn back again. But many people don't know, so what happens? <laughs> very dangerous. Very dangerous we are this world. Sometimes the saints came into this world of the very high order. Saints come to this world. And they have to be that they're trapped in this world for many thousands of years before they get liberation again and go back home. You may have been saints in the past life. You might have come here with a good intention to help this world, but then you get stuck here. Understand? And then maybe of the same equality that you have acquired in previous lives. So you are crying inside. You probably remember something in very deep of your subconscious. You remember that you have been something different from ordinary person here. You cannot bear the suffering anymore. Therefore you call for help. So some master must come out, come down and help you. Understand? So if you practice very well and you are sincere, you'll be able to know that. You know this and you feel it. You know that you are somehow not from this world, not ordinary person. You came for some purpose. Now you have slipped down. <laughs> now you try to go back home. This happened. This happened. Soon, sooner or later, we we'll we will have to be the torch bearers. I mean, in spiritual field as well as in worldly um, achievements, we will have to be the forerunner, the leaders of the world, not in political movement, not in revolutionary uh, reaction, but in shining examples of sacrifice, of love. That's how we rescue the world. That's how we lead the world into new age, into new spirit of serving and loving each other. Love thy neighbor must not be only an empty sentence, but it should be a very ordinary, day-to-day, -day basic, uh, ordinary way of life. We have to love the neighbor until we do not know that we have even love that we do things in love, just like we wash our hands, just like we feed ourselves. It's very normal, very ordinary, that no one even need to praise us. And if people praise us, we would feel a kind of strange. Why? Why should I be praised for washing my own hands or feeding my own uh, mouth, for example? Yes. That's the, that's the, that is the true way of love your neighbor. Until then, we just practice. We are just in an apprenticeship of loving the neighbor, but we not truly have that love. We do not truly understand. Soon, <clears throat> many of you, most of you, or all of you, have to be the leaders of your environment, leading mankind into a new way of thinking, new way of living. We have to, we have to show a shining example of sacrifice and true love. So, regardless of all your small obstacles in your meditation practice, 
or in your daily dealing with the world, regardless of your mood, of your frustration, of your personal emotion and uh, anger, fear, sorrow. We have to move on with the greater ideal, with a better, a more, a nobler goal. We have to keep this noble goal in mind and forget about the small thorns and the small pebbles and stones along the road. We have to wear big shoes, big boots, and walk on all the thorns. These big boots of protection is our determination to be noble, to serve in face of difficulties and frustration, in face of uh, test of courage and faith. We must be greater than we imagine we could be. We must be better than what we expect our neighbor to be. We must sacrifice more than we can uh, demand from our neighbors or our close people, our associates. Only in this way we can show others how to be noble, how to sacrifice, how to love. We have to sacrifice in such a natural way, in such a repeated circle, until we do it without knowing that we sacrifice, until we sacrifice without thinking that we sacrifice, until the word sacrifice doesn't mean anything to us at all, because we do things in such a natural, automatic way. Only in such a vision of the world can we become one of the one of the leading planet in this universe. Only in such a vision that we do not need to go to Nirvana. We have have we should keep this vision in mind and make our world a paradise with positive energy and agreement between thousands, hundreds of thousands of us, we can make it. And it's not, I'm talking to you today in a dream or in a, such a leisurely vision, but we will do it. We will do it as much as our capacity allow, as much as our time on earth allow. As long as we live, we must dedicate our whole to the goodness, to the progress of mankind, of the whole world, of the whole universe. Our vision must be so large, larger than life, must be so noble that we have nothing else to lose. We fear nothing in such greatness of a vision. Every obstacle becomes so small. Every personal uh, inconvenience becomes so meaningless in such a vision. I do not feel that we are talking like a dream or just making a vision, but I feel that it will come true someday. It might have already begun to take root, but it will have to branch forth into all directions and make new buds, new flowers, new branches. 
It has to grow larger, greater, faster, and envelop the whole world with the spirit of love and service, unconditional service. I'm grateful to be here with you. Yes. Among beautiful people, just sometimes you don't know how beautiful you are, you try to pretend to be stupid, to be bad. <laughs> but you are nice, yeah? You're really perfect. Nothing you do can change your perfection. One day you will realize that. Because we try too hard to be something else, to be somebody else, and to please everybody else, and we forget your perfect, our perfection. I realize that. I realize that. Yeah, even though I cannot please you, I cannot please everybody, and you still think I'm wrong and I do things not the way you think correctly, but I'm perfect. And one day you too will realize that. Not to be proud of, just to be happy. <laughs> just to know the truth. Yeah? You're okay, really. God loves you so much, and you love yourself so much. You will realize that everything is all right. The only problem with us, the only thing that is not all right with us is that because we have to integrate with a lot of other people and we are influenced by them and we try to think their way, we try to do it their ways, we try to accept their opinions about us, right or wrong, good or bad. And that's when we lost touch with ourselves and reject our own true self and that's when we don't know we are perfect. Yeah, we got confused in all this life, all this happening, yeah? Uh, but you will realize it, and you will love yourself more, and you love yourself the best, and then you can love everybody else too. Hmm? Take time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you feel free. <laughs> Uh, in general, if you live somewhere and it's, if you continue to have one bad luck after another, yeah, financially, health-wise, or friendship or family problem, then something wrong with your house, okay? Number one, check around your house first. If you piling up all kind of garbage or unuseful things that, that you've been attached to over the years and you know, been dusty around the house and piling up and it looked very untidy around the house or inside any rooms of the house, yes? Especially uh, auspicious area like the east side where the sun was shining in, yes? Or maybe your bathroom is right in front of your door or something like that. And uh, But uh, if you cannot manage to keep changing things or moving things, then just move the house and you know, leave all the things unnecessary that you haven't used for months or years behind. Or give it to charity, yeah? Uh, clear up your closet to see just enough to use. Hmm? Whatever you don't need, just give it away or sell it, garage sale or anything, okay? First clear up your house just like a very nice and just like I would live there. Okay? Simplify things, simplify your life. And then if still doesn't work, then maybe you move the house, yeah? Maybe it's in an inauspicious area, maybe a hell row nearby or something, okay? Yes. So feng shui is just about that, yeah? Some good place and some bad place, okay? Mm. Thank you, Master. Yeah, you're welcome. Karma is a Sanskrit name for cause and effect, mm -hmm. yeah? <laughs> All right, uh, cause and effect is that. Actually, just whatever you think, so shall you have. Just, or whatever you act, so shall you reap the benefit or the consequence. It is very simple. You plant a seed of an orange, and you get the orange, okay? You think of something good, that good things will come to you. You think something bad, even if it's true, that bad things will affect you first, yeah? 
That's why in the Bible it says, don't judge, so nobody will judge you. You won't get judged. That's the law of karma. And so we, just like I have been explaining in the lecture in Durban, that whatever you think, you will get the result. You will get that come to you. Yeah? And when we don't have this body anymore, we can see that more clearly. Now we have the body. It's difficult for us to see things coming to us. So, for example, today you wish like you wish you have <clears throat> intensely, yeah, intensely, that you will have a, a wife, you know, such and such color and things like that. And then you forgot all about it. Three years later, you met that person and you thought, ah, incident, coincidence. No, you wished her to come. That's like that. You forget it. Sometimes she doesn't come three years later, but thirty years later even. You forgot all about your wish. And then at that time, you forgot to wish that she has a pleasant personality <laughs> <laughs> or a good cooking talent or a tidy habit. You forgot. You say, oh my God, probably you saw one girl with a blonde and a big. <laughs> Big number, yeah. <laughs> and then you thought, my God, I wish I have a wife like that. But you forgot in that moment to add, you know, nice personality, good cooking talent, tidy habits, you know, good bank account, whatever. And then so when that person comes, three years later, thirty years later, she's exactly like the one you saw on the street, but lousy cook. <laughs> had a big debt in a credit card bank and a terrible personality, for example, like that. You see? Uh, so whatever you think or you wish will come true. Yeah, that's the law of cause and effect. Or whatever you do to others, you know, it comes back to you. That's the law of cause and effect or karma. Okay? Yes. There's a small poem from Rami, When We Pray Alone. Eh? It goes like this. We are brought thick desserts. And we rarely refuse them. If somebody gives you dessert, you don't refuse. Yeah. We worship devoutly when we are with others. Hours we sit. Though we get up quickly after a few minutes when we pray alone. Ha! Huh. Nobody look. Why have to show off, right? <laughs> We hurry down the gullet of our wantings, but these qualities can change. As minerals in the ground rise inside trees and becomes tree. As a plant faces an animal and enters the animal, so a human can put down the heavy body baggage and be light. Mm. So, what do we have here? He has very keen eyes, yeah? He can observe a human's behavior, yeah? So he say, if somebody offers, you know, I translate a little bit, yeah? If we are offered, very nice, big piece of dessert, sweet, you know, like chocolate cakes, yeah. yeah. So Master Rumi said to us that, suppose somebody offer us very big, thick, juicy, sweetened, delicious dessert, you know, piece of cake, for example, cream on it, you know, yeah. <laughs> icing sugar, <laughs> and a cup of coffee, or tea next to it. Mm -hmm. Yum yum. Okay. We ever refuse? No. 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 Really. <laughs> he say we rarely refuse him. He's very <laughs> humane already. Normally, just say nobody refuse, <laughs> but he's very polite. You know, he's a poet. Uh, he's not so crude. <laughs> so now, he said, if somebody offer us this kind of dessert, we would rarely refuse. Yes. And similarly, when we sit with somebody else, we could sit for hours, like here, huh? huh? At home, difficult, huh? Yeah. That's why 
we have to go group meditation. Hey, before I read this poem, I already know human psychology, no? <laughs> so I said to you, at least go once a week, meditate together, no? Yes. That's why we have group meditation. Ah, Then you can sit very long, huh? Hmm? And when you come here, you can sit almost all day, huh? Except for eating and go into the bathroom or washing. You sit all day, no? Yes. Hmm. See that? But at home, can you sit this much? No. 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 How come? Something happened. Something happened. <laughs> like what? Like what happened? Uh, you have to buy some food or cooking. Oh. Uh, all kind of work, huh? Even no work, just stand up and find some work, right? Yeah. You cannot sit still, right? Wow. I don't know why. You know, if we have time to sit long time, it's very lucky time. You don't even want to get up to eat. You don't even want to get up to drink. You're reluctant to go to the bathroom even in emergency case. <laughs> so I don't know why, but at home I guess difficult, huh? Mm. All right. So, but why the Master say here that if you sit with other people, then you can sit for hours and very devoutly. But when you sit alone, he say when you pray alone, you get up quickly and running down to our highway of desire. Yeah. The gullet of our wantings is the same, like a highway of desire. I mean, oh, all kind of things we want to do. Yeah? At home, we sit a few minutes and then get up quick and go find something to do. Oh, thank you. New design. The most comfortable is when you sit at home alone, you know, in your cave or in your little room, and you wear your old clothes, and you have no shoes, your hair down, you do what you want. That would be the best. Mm. Feel the best. Yeah. Okay, but it's also fun. It's okay now and again. So, why is that? That when we are alone, we cannot sit long. The way Master Rumi is saying here, it seems like he means if we are with other people, we like to show off, you know? Yeah, we look very devout and sincere. <laughs> Dear God, I'm very sincere. Am I? <laughs> You're going to bless me. Are you? <laughs> so. It has a little bit of, you know, funny tone in there. It means for other people. I, I, it probably doesn't mean you. I know you're very good. You sit long hours at home even, right? <laughs> you do? Yes. Wow, I'm proud of you. Since when? I got initiated. How long ago? It's at least three weeks ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Only three weeks and you can sit long? Wow, I'm really proud of you. You really make me proud. Wow, that to see you here, I'm really very, very surprised and very happy. <laughs> I never thought you would come because the situation you live in, you know, and uh, those influences that you had, it's not like you didn't want to, but it's very difficult to get out of influence, you know? Yeah, very difficult. You think it's easy? It's not. Even if you just have a boyfriend or girlfriend, huh? And sometimes your boyfriend and girlfriend doesn't want you to eat vegetarian. Oh, it's already hell, huh? Every day you eat, you feel guilty, like you're doing something wrong. But this is the problem with people around us who really want to control us. And it cling to our brain here, you know? Thank God, every day, every day, really. Because it's rare. It's rare that you have such a luck and such a good opportunity that you come together as a family and then everybody <laughs> practice the same method, you know? Has the same ideal and go same direction, supporting each other's good endeavor. You understand me? Mm. Yeah. Very rare. So I'm really proud of you. But you did 
take some struggle, huh? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I can see it on your face. But you're home now. Welcome home, my baby. <laughs> Love you so much. <laughs> yeah. And now we go back to the poem of uh, Rumi. Okay. Okay, after a few minutes, he said, if we sit alone, he said, pray. But you must know, when the master say pray in here, it's meditation, huh? Otherwise, why would he mention up there, he said, hours we sit together with others. That means to sit in meditation, huh? Yes. At that time, maybe they don't say meditation, huh? They say praying, huh? Yeah. Sometimes we also say, oh, we sit and pray. That's also a prayer, of course. Huh? When you sit devoutly and think of God, huh? or deep in communion with God, that is also a prayer. It's even a more correct prayer. So he say, if we pray alone, we cannot sit too long. He say, a few minutes, we hurry, get out, <laughs> try to find something to do to fulfill our desire. But... He said, these qualities can change. Oh, thank God. Thank you so much, Master Rumi. <laughs> I thought we don't have any chance, you know, but we have. He said, but this quality can change. Isn't that wonderful? Hmm? He said, just like the minerals in the ground rise inside trees and become tree. You see, the tree took on a mineral, nutrition from the ground, they become tree, they transform into tree. Yeah. And then as a plant faces an animal and enters the animal. Ah, like the cow. Hmm? Yeah. He eats the grass or some weeds and it we transform the plants transform into animals, you see? The cycle of evolution. Hmm. And then he says, so human can also put down the heavy body baggage and be light. There's hope, huh? They give us an hour and say the way out, huh? Uh, we can change, can change. By put down the heavy body baggage and be light. What mean light? Mean lightweight? Spiritual light. Spiritual light? Possible also. Yes, yes. What he mean? <laughs> he probably played with word here, or maybe it's a translation in English, you know? They say the heavy bag is put out, then you become light. I mean, no more burden, eh? But this also mean the light inside of us. It's possible. Either way, it's the same, right? Either you put out the uh, material baggage and become light, no more burden, or you enter the light, or you become the light. It's also correct. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so now we know as group meditation is really good, huh? Yeah. That's why I told you, we must do group meditation. And then, at least, even though in the beginning, we sit there only because everybody else sit like the way he said in here. Yes. But later on, that's how we train ourselves to get this kind of habit, huh? Nah? And then we keep sitting longer even at home later. Yeah? As somebody who is good, like your brother here, <laughs> you can sit long already alone. <laughs> after initiation. Yeah, but sometime after initiation, you get into the habit quick, huh? If you really, really desire to be one with God, just sit right away. And especially after initiation, you tell your new brother and sister, that's the time we should continue with the practice. Because it's, oh, the blessing just flushed into you, you know? And so you grab it and you keep holding on to it and get more and more and more. Don't wait until your bank is empty <laughs> and then try to fill in a little bit at a time. Yes. You see, when your water tank, yeah, it's been filled, full already, yeah, and you use up a little bit every day, but then you fill it up immediately, then it's always full. But if you, okay, my tank is full, I wait until, you know, later, later, later. And when the tank is empty and then we fill in a little bit, a little bit, sometimes it doesn't trickle down into the house to use, yeah? Because it doesn't rise up enough to go out into the, the pipe. Capisce, yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, Master, how much, how much does the karma of someone near us affect us? It depends on how strong you are, eh? but if, if it's near, then it affects anyway. More or less, it will affect you, okay? And uh, 
It depends on your willingness also. For example, the master is willing to take on the karma of other people, then it just come in. And if, if you are a nice and good person and you sympathize with other people, then whoever nearby will affect you. And even you are not sympathize, it affect you also differently, yeah? More yes, or less. Master. Yes, Master. Whoever near us affect us. Even birds, dogs, cats, neighbors, friends, acquaintance, relatives, family members, they are affecting each other. Yes, Master. Master, uh, how much are we affected when we think about someone, whether they are uh, near or far, or if they have passed away? Just as if that person is next to you. Wow. Because karma doesn't have uh, distance. Uh, karma doesn't know distance. Yeah, that's why when you initiated your five generations, become also uh, liberated. Yes, yes, we're forever grateful for that. At least five generations, could be more, nine, even ten. Um, karma doesn't know distance. Master, how do we avoid bad karmic influences? I just try to mind your own business and uh, recite, <laughs> yes. you know, use the protection that uh, I teach you at the time of initiation. Focus on positive thinking and uh, remember God, okay? Yes. Praying. Yes. Meditating. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. You probably ask me why people eat meat, you know, and uh, since childhood already, and they don't die, you know, they don't get sick, you know, they don't die so quick. Well, they do get sick. That's why we built a lot of hospitals, yeah? Most of people who go to hospitals are meat eaters, yeah? Alcohol drinker, cigarette smoker, or drug user. Normal people, the vegetarian people, don't go there often, yes? Or hardly, rarely, or none. Yeah. So the reason why the human eats a lot of meat before and don't die immediately, although it should destroy our organs, you know, quickly make our heart decrease in our ability and lung and all kind of sickness. Yeah, as you know, hmm? scientifically proven and medically as proven as well. The reason is that. Because as human, we had in former life accumulated a lot of merit already in order to be born as a human, yes? So we must have some leftover merit, you know, either for happiness, for health, for wealth, or any other things, a position in the society, success in some way. So we have to continue to live even though we eat poison in order to fulfill our purpose in life of the give and take, yes? But because we do not continue to make more merit, and instead we use up all the store merit, and then we make new, worse karma, worse uh, um, actions, yeah? That will breed bad retribution. Therefore, we have dead, half alive, continue to live and struggle until truly we run out of the merit in the store. And the bad karma that we created anew piled upon us. Then either we are very, very sick or we die. You got me? Yes. If we did not have the merit in the store, yeah, then we could not even be born as human. Hmm? Human is a very complex uh, physical structure which house not only the physical but the mental, the emotional, the psychological, the psychic bodies and ability, etc., etc., hmm? and the divine power to boot. But, you see, if we don't keep the merit running, then we will be cut short. That's why some of you often ask me, uh, why some people die too early, some people die young, and it seems like they didn't do anything wrong at all in their life. It is probably meat that killed them. See, or cigarette, or drug, alcohol. 
These are the things that's no good for us. If we want to live, we should never even look at those things. Look, not even. If we, we treasure the body and want to be healthy until the day our time is up and we go, then we should never even mention the word alcohol, drug, meat, yeah, cigarette. These things kill us quickly. But the reason why a lot of people ask me, why some people smoke and they live longer? Yeah, and some people don't ever smoke, <laughs> live shorter life. That is because other factors kill them, yeah? Maybe they eat too much meat or they drink alcohol or drug or other things or indulge in bad negative tendency or thinking, yeah. Or the merit of human life has run out, yeah, okay. And they did not earn any more, that's why, or they destroy it. Maybe, just like if you have one hundred dollars, it's supposed to last you three days, yes? But if you squander it all in five minutes, it's also possible, or one minute even possible, yes? But if you more spare some and you know how to economize, it lasts maybe longer than three days. Hmm? Some people buy expensive stuff or don't know what to buy and then are wasted the money. Some people know how, and the money lasts longer, yeah? Or you can invest in the bank. That's like earning new merit instead of spending it all. Okay, right. Now you know all the answers, okay? Mm. All right. We have to save the planet. So people have time to wake up. Some people sleep deeper than others. Your family member also sometimes, some people sleep very light. In case emergency, you wake them up, they go out right away, or they wake up even before. And some people, it takes a long time to wake them up. All right, so we have to wait for our family member. We cannot just say, okay, that guy, he sleeps so deep. Oh, well, I have to go out. I go out by myself. I don't want to wait for him. So after we save the planet, of course, people will be different, eh? They have to be different now in order to save the planet already. So, your part is to be positive. Save the planet first and things will change after. It's not you alone who can save the planet. It's the people who change their consciousness. If they go veg, go green, do good, then that means they have changed for the better. Their consciousness have gone up a higher level. Then, of course, they merit the earth. They could continue to live here and their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, etc. At that time, people will be in a higher level of consciousness and things will be clearer to them and to all. We will live in peace and love. You have to envision a positive world, the heaven on earth that you would like it to be. You have to envision the nobler world, the positive world, the beautiful world, the heaven world. Saving the world is a compassionate act. Even if the world is not saved, you are. You are saved by your loving kindness. Your merit will be multifold because you want to save others. This is the point that many of you still don't get. <laughs> if you want to save the world, if you want to do anything toward this goal, you are enlarging your nobility, your heavenly attribute. So if you spread the encouragement to save the planet, if you go veg, if you go green, if you do good deeds, you help others because of other beings' lives on earth, because you want to save their lives on earth, then you have a saintly quality. You reawaken your holiness. It's not just about saving the physical planets and the physical lives. It's also about how great you are for wanting to do so, and actually partaking in this life-saving crusade. Understand? Yes, thank you, Master. So if people do want to go veg, go green, and do good because they want to save the planet, then their spirit is noble. They have elevated themselves. While talking about enemies, we really have to love our enemies. Do you know that? Because they come back and you have to love them. They come back as your wife, your husband, your sons, your daughter. <laughs> then that's the way 
You have to love your enemy. <laughs> you do it now or you come back and do it later. You do it willingly or you have to do it by order <laughs> of the Lord of Karma. Hmm? There's a joke, it goes like this. A man died, you know, and went to hell. And uh, the king of uh, Hade received him in front of his uh, throne together with another person. And he said, You, Mr. Johnson, you own this person, Madam Smith, so much money, but you haven't paid back. So she is suing you. I think because you didn't pay her back, and I don't think you can ever pay her back if you come back next life as a human again. Since you don't have any merit in your account, you're not going to have any money at all again in the next lifetime. So I am going to make you become a horse so that you can work all your life, or maybe a, a buffalo, you can carry the cart, you know, the, the car, and carry in her all your life until you repay your debt, or maybe it spill over to the next life even. So the man, you know, the money owner say, Oh, king, maybe it's not a good idea. Even if I became a horse or a buffalo or a dog or whatever, I will never be able to pay it all to her. So why don't you make me become her father? <laughs> and I will pay my whole lifetime. <laughs> you know, since the day, her date of birth, I will be keep paying, paying, paying. <laughs> so, and in that case, he will be very willingly pay, ne? because he will love uh, whatever she might be reincarnated into, yeah? And in that case, whatever she wants, he will give, you know, I mean, willingly <laughs> and uh, lovingly and even proudly, <laughs> yes. My daughter, <laughs> you know, I pay her a hundred thousand dollars to go to college. Look at what she is now. <laughs> uh, I'm still paying for her uh, apartment. <laughs> Uh, you know, she wants a uh, helicopter, I'm going to get it for her, <laughs> for example, like that, yeah? <laughs> so, okay, that is really <laughs> similar to love thy enemy, yeah? <laughs> you must love them now, <laughs> or else you have to come back <laughs> and love them even more, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, and I told you another uh, joke, remember? Um, you know, a little kid fell in love with a little kid, you know. <laughs> uh, schoolmate, you know, and he came home, asked his father, you know, sometimes kids, they, they think they fall in love, they have a crush, you know, on somebody in the class, eight years old or ten years old or something, and the kid come back home, eight years old, ask his father, Father, is it expensive to be married? <laughs> Father said, Yes, son, it is very expensive. So the son asked, uh, How much it cost? And the father said, I don't know, son, I'm still paying. <laughs> the wedding cake, you know. <laughs> the wedding cake, very expensive. <laughs> okay, now you can meditate, all right? <laughs> 